everyone. What Tommaso Ciampa said tonight was absolutely correct. He is the reason why NXT is the A show. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there. What's up, everybody? DJ Kaz, and of course, I am back to give you the NXT rundown. Yes, I am back after a long I had us away from YouTube, but yes, I'm about to give you my thoughts on NXT. I still consider myself the NXT correspondent and just got to find out what I'm going to be a correspondent for. So let's go ahead and get back into calling NXT. We started off with a bit of a recap from last week's episode of NXT. The NXT Championship match being defended, then champion Aleister Black versus Tommaso Ciampa. And of course, I'm, not, I'm just giving you my quick thoughts on that. I actually thought the match was very, very good. They laid that match out very, very well is what NXT has been known for. But yes, it recapped on how Tommaso Ciampa won the belt. Gargano would get involved and inadvertently hit Black with the title and help Ciampa get the victory and become the new NXT champion. Of course, our first matchup of the night of Shane Thorne and uh, Nick Miller of The Mighty versus Heavy Machinery's Tucker Knight and Otis Dozovich. Very good to see Tucker Knight back. Of course, they did that angle where he was taken out by quote-unquote TM. I keep calling him TM61 for some reason. I can't help it. But yes, um, they had supposedly attacked him. Of course, if you actually know what well with Tucker Knight, he actually had a newborn child. So congratulations out to him. And you can tell through this match that he was very, very happy to be back in the ring. And it was good. it was good to see him back. The match was definitely good. It definitely had a lot of heat. I'm not really big on Nigel McGuinness like trying to play advocate because you can tell they're trying to have him play more of a heel role on commentary. I like him more as the straight man, like much like he is on takeovers and sometimes on 205 Live when I get a chance to watch. So he needs to work on that. But yeah, back to this match. Very good. My one issue, though, with these teams is because right now, people, if you saw the Mustache Mountain versus Undisputed Era tag team matches, Right now, teams like the Mighty Heavy Machinery, and of course, the next thing I'm about to get to here in a second, because in this match, the Mighty was completely in control. Um, they had Tucker Knight down for the count, and what music happens to hit? Bring the Swag, which I actually love that theme song, believe it or not. And of course, it's the theme song of the Street Profits. And randomly out of nowhere they're just coming through the crowd which honestly i i kind of buy because that's really their gimmick being the street being the street profits of angelo dawkins and montez ford and of course you you we all know what happens i mean you get distracted the mic gets distracted tucker knight actually is able to make the tag to Ois dozovich they hit their finisher and of course this match goes to heavy machinery it is very good to actually see heavy machinery get a win because these guys often lose, and that's actually going to be the point that I'm about to make here. One of the problems with the Mighty and the Heavy Machinery, and even the Street Profits to a degree, is the fact that these are two teams that have been pushed to a degree because I'm always going to go back to this. I reviewed this episode where Heavy Machinery got their first NXT Tag Team title shot to face AOP, and once they lost to that team when AOP was still down there, these guys haven't really been able to recover since they've been kind of that secondary tag team map, which I could see Vince just easily looking at these guys on the main roster going like, I want Tucker Knight to be the guy. I don't care about Ois Dozovich. Even the Mighty, I mean, even with their heel turn, they're just, their personalities as heels just hasn't been able to translate to the ring. And, and oh, question, am I the only one that just wished that they would change their goddamn theme song? Because, guys, you're now a heel. You're a heel tag team. Act like a fucking heel tag team for once. Like, please, change the theme song. And as far as the Street Profits is concerned, I mean, they're no better off. They've been losing, too. They got their push. They lost to AOP. So the NXT tag team division, they have teams. They just really need to get behind the lower tiers because right now, Undisputed Era and Mustache Mountain are just passing these dudes by. And they got to step up. And speaking of Mustache Mountain, they were actually in action in action tonight, making their return to full sale in, in ring action, I mean, taking on two enhancement towns, I mean, this is really more or less your, your typical, like, enhancement town versus the actual team that we want to get over matchup, so nothing really, yeah, nothing really to this matchup right here, I'm just going to say that right now, of course, you know, uh, Tyler Bay had to apologize Trent Sound for throwing in the towel, and it turns out that they had spoke to William Rico earlier on the day of the week, and we found out tonight announced 
that at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4, I don't know if I'm going to say that right, they will get their rematch for the NXT Tag Team Championships against Undisputed Errors, Kyle O'Reilly, and Roderick Strong. People, if you saw the last two matches, this match on a big, big stage like a TakeOver, I expect these guys to tear the house down. Of course, Mustache Mountain cut a promo afterwards saying that pretty much they're going to regain their titles, and that was that. Up next on NXT, the, sec- the next match that we had was EC3, the top 1%, versus the finest Kona Reeves. People, this Kona Reeves gimmick absolutely sucks. It looks like he's playing pro wrestler. The dude's got a good look. He's got a good physique. He's definitely got a presence to him. But for some reason, him just yelling in the ring saying, I'm the finest. is just really knocking out. Like him just like, I'm the finest. Like seriously, like that is just not going to roll. I mean, I mean, honestly, this match was actually like pretty surprisingly good. And that's the thing. Cody Reeves. The gimmick sucks, but he can definitely work when he's actually in the ring. And this is actually the biggest match that they have mentioned on commentary since he's been back in NXT. And I like the fact that they mentioned that. And, of course, EC3, he's pretty much in control. He's got him in a side headlock for pretty much a lot of the matchup. EC3 is in control. He delivers an elbow drop. And, lo and behold, the Velveteen Dreams music hits. And, of course, Velveteen Dream is just going like, if you want to talk, it seems as if somebody is still upset for what happened in Royal Albert Hall. And he, and Velveteen Dream is pretty much like, here's the thing. We can talk, but you're going to have to come into my world, too. And I like the fact that they added, like, at the snap of his fingers, his Titan draw immediately went away. And it's like, you went from my world back to the world that you're known, supposedly being the top 1%. And what I thought was the shockingness of shocks of all near falls in NXT history, when Kona Reeves hit his reverse Samoan drop on EC3, I'm like, you better not fucking beat this dude again. I, By the way, I didn't like the fact that he EC3 lost to Gargano, but I get why. But back to this. If you beat EC3 again to this guy, you will... But thank goodness they didn't beat him. That kick out at two was like, whew. But of course, EC3, pretty much, he was able to get his ba- his balance back. He had the TKO, and he got the win. So, it looks like, as we found out, I'm just going to go into the announcement. William Regal announced later on that it's going to be EC3 versus the Velveteen Dream when we get to NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. That match is going to be interesting. I will say that much. Because EC3, he's good, but I don't know if he's that good to carry a Velveteen, especially Velveteen with just very little experience, even though he's only he's, he's only been three years in the game. But go back and watch this match with Alistair Black. Alistair Black carried him, people, I'm just saying. But yeah, that was that. Of course, this was the main event match of the night. Well, actually, before we even get to that, Mustache Mountain are pretty much but before I get to that, EC3 actually gets interviewed afterwards. And he's pretty much gonna, and he pretty much said that I'm going to show Velveteen Dream why I am the top 1% of NXT. He's the best guy here, the best guy there, the best guy anywhere. He is very good in this setting. I love EC3. Now we can get to this Mustache Mountain promo. And pretty much as they're walking outside, they're pretty much told once again that they are going to regain their NXT tag team tiles by any means necessary. Shockingly, no Adam Cole on the Spirit Arrow on the show tonight from what I saw. I'm probably going to have to go back and check if I missed it. All right, this was the main event match of the night. Candice LeRae versus Shayna Baszler. Baszler offers Candice, you know, to just leave the ring, you know, because you're. it looks like you're playing for a wrestler. You don't belong in my world. But real quick, before I go on to this match, people, Candice LeRae's theme sounds like something that you would have heard out of the 70s. If you've ever seen... The Brady Bunch, or anything of a show like that, that's, or Happy Days, that's what I would think of that when I hear that song, but anyway, but yes, Candice LeRae, of course, she's not going to leave, she goes on a house of fire and just drop kicks, drop kicks the champion out of the ring, LeRae with a baseball slide on the outside, and LeRae, of course, with a jawbreaker, a couple of arm drags, single leg drop kick, of course, it only got a two count. 
And then, of course, Shayna Baszler goes for the, uh, she just stomps on the elbow of Candice LeRae, pretty much leaving Candice LeRae helpless. This was definitely a fun little back and forth match. And what I liked about this is the fact that it's rare that we see Shayna Baszler compete in NXT or any champion, to be honest with you. And I thought it was, it made sense for the champion to make her in-ring return in the main event match of the night. So, yeah, I, I did like that aspect. And, of course, LeRae... F- she flies right into the steps, and of course Shayna Baszler goes back in the ring, and she wants the count the count out victory. Which I don't know how that that looks on your champion. I mean, Shayna Baszler is a badass. There was definitely a lot of leaps from Candice Array. I think there was a tornado DDT at one point, um, but eventually we all know what happens. Candice Array. This is one of those matches where she gives it her all. She goes for a finisher. She misses the moonsault. And of course, Shayna Baszler, excuse me, Baszler gets her in the rear naked chokehold applied again, and Candice LeRae taps out. Yeah, Shayna Baszler gets the win. <laughs> and then, of course, Shayna Baszler attacks afterwards. More refs come in, and then who should come in to make the save? Kyrie Sane. People, I'm just going to let you know right now, I am really disappointed that that Kyrie Sane's the one getting the title shot and not Bianca Belair. Because now that I'm back on YouTube, I'm going to be glamoring to talk about Bianca Belair anytime her segments pop up. But that's just a little teaser for you guys. Of course, guys, now it is time for the main event segment. And boy, was this a main event segment. The new NXT champion, Tommaso Ciampa, makes his way into the NXT Full Sail University Arena. Still no music, which I absolutely love. And people, you can argue with me about this, but Tommaso Ciampa is the best fucking heel in WWE period right now. That includes him surpassing Samoa Joe. You can fight me. But yeah, Tommaso Ciampa, the one thing I was hoping when he came out was... I hope he just gloats. I also would have preferred if he had just smiled throughout the whole thing and not even said a word. But hearing Tommaso Chop on the mic is always a, a fun time. Him saying that I am the A, the, I am the reason why NXT is the A show now because I am the champion. I've put an end to the Johnny Gargano story. I've shown that Aleister Black is not as mystique as he is or he thinks he is, I should say. And then, of course, Tommaso Ciampa, I am your NXT champion. I am NXT. He crisscross applesauces in the middle of the ring with the title. Aleister Black's music hits. And, of course, Aleister Black about to go down to the ring. Looks like he's about to go do something to Ciampa. But who should show up all of a sudden? Johnny freaking wrestling. Now, people, this segment was so fantastic because... If you heard the crowd, let me me finish this up. Yeah, Johnny Gargano, he attacks Ciampa. And, of course, you got some action said, the only reason why you're the champion is because of me. The only reason why you have that title is because of me. And Aleister Black kicks the hell out of Johnny Gargano in the face. And the crowd chants, you deserve it. People, think about it. Tommaso Ciampa, the one guy that they despise because they have been beating up their favorite, Johnny Gargano. But the fact that Johnny Gargano is their sole favorite, the one that gets absolutely cheered. The fact that he is the sole reason why the man that they despise the most is the NXT champion is because of him. That is so acropole. That is just justice done at its finest. And I love it so much. This story is being told very well. People, the full cell crowd, when Johnny Gargano attacked Ciampa, he didn't really get any reaction because in their minds, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this right, they're going like, dude, you can attack him all you want. You're the reason why he's the champion. We don't like you as much anymore. I mean, people, they chanted one more time. And here's the thing. In my mind, when I was watching it, I'm just going like, I hope Aleister Black kicks the hell out of Johnny Gargano for what he did. And he did it. 
And then Alistair Black gets the mic and he says, yeah, you're right. Shimasa Chapa is the champion because of you. It reminds me of like one of those things like where if you were in school and it's like you're in the classroom and it's like everybody hates this one guy. But if you do something to help him even accidentally, they're going to look at you to blame and not him. I thought this main event segment was great. I thought Chaba was great. Johnny Gargano was fine. Aleister Black being the guy who should probably be pissed, and I'm glad he is. And NXT goes off the air, which what we got next next week. Ricochet, the one and only, will be making his return. So definitely going to have that to look forward to. And people, I cannot wait to talk about this. Keith freaking Lee will be making his NXT debut. So next week's episode is definitely going to be must see. Overall episode, overall thoughts on NXT and I guess. Really, really fun one hour show. This is really the only show I've been able to keep up consistently. I mean, fuck Raw and SmackDown, I'm just saying. But yeah, we got some development with EC3 and Velveteen. We had a nice little development in the tag team division with Mustache Mountain, Street Profits, Heavy Machinery, and The Mighty. We had some matches announced for TakeOver, a women's main event main event match that was great and a fun little main event segment this episode was an a plus all right people that is it from my end i am back on youtube we'll see if i return but yes i am dj cast and i will see you around later days